All right, welcome back. We are going to get started on our options features for the game. This one will take a couple of videos to get through. And also, before we get started, I want to point something out. Uh, if you've been following along in this series, you might already notice. And that is I had to change my microphone settings because it is scorching hot outside. I have to have a fan on for circulation, plus the fan in my computer creates quite a bit of noise. I did a lot of recording tests, and what I came up with were the settings that you are hearing now. This is the best that I could come up with. My main concern is that it does not distract from the tutorial. So hopefully it sounds fine to you and we can get going. So first things first, stemming from our last couple of videos, we created some sprites. You may have already moved yours into folders for organization. I happen to notice that I haven't yet, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to move my tile blur into my tile folder, text into text, and then button pause quit, continue, and our button pause can all go in to our buttons subfolder in our sprites folder. I am going to start off by importing all the sprites that we're going to need to make our options feature. I'm on the level one tab. I'm just going to use this as a guide as I usually do. So I will double click on the layout, go to sprites, and insert one over here. And let's load an image from a file, navigate to our UI folder, and inside there we have one called social buttons. Open that one and make sure that the origin point is right in the middle. And I'm going to exit out of that, and we can name this btn underscore opt for options and then another underscore this one I'm just going to call Facebook each button for me it's going to link to a social media connected to this YouTube channel and I'm going to have four buttons that uh, pop out from our options and three of them I'm going to link to my personal social media accounts and the fourth one I will make a mute option so we can mute the audio. So I'm just going to use Facebook as my first one and we'll create more from there. So I am going to double click on the layout again, go down to sprites and let's insert another one. Open from a file and I'm going to choose Facebook. My origin points in the middle. I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to rename this one. I'm going to call this icon underscore Facebook because this isn't going to be a button. This is just going to be for a visual reference. So if we double click again, we can add another sprite, place that, load an image from a file, and let's pick, I'm going to pick my uh, Twitter one. That looks good. I'll rename it icon underscore Twitter. And let's do it one more time for our last icon, which is going to be YouTube. Icon underscore YouTube. So I'm going to zoom in and show you uh, what I'm looking at here. I'm going to make this button appear underneath the icon. So we're going to need to change the size of some things, but the reason I have it set up this way is that these buttons are going to be what we program and link to. Therefore, if I ever want to change one of these icons, these icons are interchangeable. They will have no functionality in the game, but these buttons will always be there no matter what they link to. So before I clone this and make more of these buttons for these icons, I want to set this button up so that we can clone all the changes that we make. Select the button, Go over to the size and let's change the X scale to 45% and the Y to 45%. Because over here on our dotted line, this is our viewport that we will see when the game runs. I want the options, I'm going to put the options down here in the corner. And we're going to have us a little cogwheel. And this is going to bounce out and it's going to take up just this corner of the screen. So I want these to be big enough to see, but small enough to stay out of the way of everything else on the screen. 
So while we still have it selected, let's go over to the properties and edit behaviors, add a new behavior, and let's pick the tween behavior. I'm going to stretch this out just a little. Now that we have the behavior assigned and the scale to what we want it, I'm just going to right click on it and say clone object type, place it, and then I'm going to change the name of btn underscore opt underscore Twitter. And then I will do the same thing, right click on it, clone it, place it, and rename this one YouTube. And then I'm going to do it one more time and we will name this one volume. We have a couple more things to import, so I'm going to double click out here in an open space, go to sprites, and I want to load an image from a file, and let's get our icon underscore options. Make sure your origin is right in the middle. And let's rename that btn underscore options double click and let's add another sprite and we will load our icon volume origin in the middle exit out of that let's rename this icon underscore volume so I'm going to zoom in a little here and kind of put this stuff in a general area I think I'm going to want it so my volume, I want to be my bottom option. I want my YouTube on top, and then my Twitter, then my Facebook, and then the, uh, the mute will go here. So when we select the options, these buttons are going to pop out with these icons overlaying them. And this is going to be kind of what it looks like in this little square viewing area. And then when we hit it again, they'll all go back inside and disappear. Okay, I'm going to zoom in again, and I'm going to take my YouTube icon. And it is below the button on the Z order. But I also realized that I was not paying attention to what layer we were on. So we need to change the Z order of everything. So I'm going to right click on the icon and go to Z order and send to top. And then I'm gonna do that for all of these icons because they all need to be above the buttons. Now this actually isn't going to matter once we get this set up because what we're going to do once we get it set up is we're going to delete all this and we're going to create it in code at the beginning of each level. But for our viewing purposes, we want to make sure that these are in the correct Z order so we can get it set up. Let's zoom in really close down here. I'm going to take this Facebook icon and with it selected, come over here to size and I'm going to take the X and Y scale both down to 30%. So now it fits right in the middle of the button, just like that. So it looks like an actual button with all the shadow and everything. So in code, we're going to match up that little origin point in the middle with the button's origin point in the middle. And the way that we're going to do that is by giving the icons a behavior that will automatically place it in that location. Select our Facebook icon and go to Edit Behaviors. Let's add a new behavior and pick the pin behavior. Now let's get the YouTube icon. Let's add a behavior, new behavior, give it the pin. And then with it selected, go to size and change X to 30 and Y to 30. And actually I moved that in the wrong place, didn't I? So it'll be something like that. And then do the same thing with our Twitter icon here. And make sure we change our size 30% on the X and Y scale. Now our volume icon is a little bit different size. Let's change its X and Y scale to 55%. Fits in there quite nicely. 
And with it still selected, go to Edit Behaviors, Add a New Behavior, and select the pin. So all of our icons have the pin behavior and have been resized. All of our buttons, because we set one up and then cloned it, all have the tween behavior and are the correct size. So now our little cog wheel that's going to be our options icon is actually a little small because I want it to be I want it to be bigger than the buttons, but I also want it to be big enough in the corner of the screen that the player sees it and knows what it is. So let's select it and I'm going to go to size and I'm going to raise this up to 140 on the X and Y scale. And while we have our options cog wheel selected, let's go ahead and go to edit behaviors, add a new behavior, and let's give this one a tween behavior also. All right, now that we have that set up, the way we're going to make all this happen is through functions. So let's go to our functions tab, and I'm gonna close everything up, and I'm going to create a new group, and I will call this options menu open slash close. So we're going to create two functions. One's going to open the options, and the other one's going to close the options. So let's go ahead and start with the open one. So I'm going to press F on the keyboard and that's going to say add a function and let's name this options open. And then with this all selected, I'm just going to click and drag this up into our group. So I'm gonna start out by creating these objects. Add an action, go to system, create object. And I wanna create these buttons. So let's go with Facebook and the layer is actually going to be a layer that already exists on all our layouts that the options will appear on. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in parentheses the buttons layer and it comes up so that does mean we have it. And where I want to create it is at the origin point of our cog wheel, our options cog wheel, because I want everything to be created right there underneath the cog wheel and I want it to fan out from there. So my X position is going to be the X position of that wheel and we named it BTN options. There it is. That'll be dot X. We can do the same thing for Y BTN underscore options dot Y. And if we go over to our map, I just want to show you something. We have this buttons layer and that's where our quit button is. And if we were to open up any of our menus, that buttons layer exists. It does not exist on our level layouts. That's because the options menu is not going to be on our level layout. When we are in a level, the only thing it's going to have is the pause feature, which we created in the last couple videos. So to get to the options, you will have to be on either the title menu, the next, the retry, or the map. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of those. In fact, I'm going to exit out of some of these. I don't need controls. I don't need objects right now. Uh, we don't need the template and I'll just leave it at that for right now. I just need to clear out some of that. So if we go to our map layout, you see we have this buttons layer and all of these menu layouts that we have in our menus folder are going to be able to have the options feature in it because it has the correct layer. And we access that layer through our function. So let's add the rest. We can add an action, system, create object, and let's choose the Facebook icon. And that's going to be on layer buttons and its X position is going to be the same as the other. BTN underscore options dot X and BTN options dot Y. And after we create these, we're going to animate these to flare out from the cogwheel. So instead of having to code the movement of both of these, we added a pin behavior to the icon. So we can actually just pin this to the button and wherever we move the button, the icon will follow. So let's add an action and let's go into our Facebook icon 
and scroll down to pin and say pin to object. And that object is going to be our Facebook button. And we want position only. The pin behavior, when used like this, will pin the origin point of our Facebook icon to the origin point of our Facebook button. Here comes the easy yet somewhat tedious part. There's always multiple ways to do everything inside Construct 3. And this is just going to be the way that uh, I have chosen to set this up. So let's go ahead and highlight all three of these and control C to copy, control V to paste. Before we move forward, I want to do something else that's going to help us along. If we right click inside this block of code, like down here next to the add action, we can go down to add comment. And because we right clicked in the block of code, it added the comment inside the block of code. I'm just going to type in Facebook button. I don't like the color of it, so I'm going to right click, go to colors. I'm going to change the background color to a solid black and I'll do it again and change the text color. I'm going to pick a bright yellow. I like a lot of contrast. It's easy to spot and it looks different from anything else in our event sheets. So I'm going to slide that to the top and then I'm going to control C, control V to paste and slide this one down where we start our new set of icons and buttons. And I will go in here and change this to uh, Twitter. Let's go into our Facebook button create and I'm going to hit R on the keyboard and I want to replace the Facebook button. So click on that and select the Twitter to replace it with. I like this one, hit R on the keyboard. We want to change the icon and let's select the Twitter icon. And then down here, the same thing. Let's hit R on the keyboard. Let's replace the icon to the Twitter icon. And we also want to hit R on the keyboard again. And this time, let's pick the button and change it to the Twitter button. By copying and pasting, we brought over a lot of this other stuff that we now don't have to type out. So now I'm going to select these three actions and the comment, and I'm going to control C to copy, control V to paste. I'll go in here and change Twitter to YouTube, and then do the same thing we did up there. Highlight, press R. Let's change the button from Twitter to YouTube. Come down here, R on the keyboard, change our icon from Twitter to YouTube. And this one, R, we can change the icon to YouTube and we want to pin that to the button. So hit R again and change the Twitter button to the YouTube button. Let's do this one more time. Highlight all of those. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Go into our comment. Let's change YouTube to volume. And then change all our buttons our YouTube to the volume button, the icon to the volume icon, and same down here. There we go. So each section should have the same button and icon that we noted in the comment. So Facebook button should have Facebook button, Facebook icon, Facebook button, Facebook icon. Twitter should have Twitter, 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 Twitter. YouTube, 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 and same with the volume. Okay, let's copy just the comment. So highlight it, control C, control V, and then we can drag one of them down here below all of this. Let's go in and change this to say something like uh, rotate options icon. So you can put anything in these comments and it has absolutely no bearing on your code. This is just for you to organize your code in the event sheets so you can find stuff later when you're trying to debug or change things. So what I'm doing here, I'm saying we're going to rotate the options icon. Over here in our level one tab, 
what I want to happen is when we tap on the options to call it up, I want it to spin. Well, I guess it'd spin that way. So I want it to spin as it opens up and then when we close it, it'll spin back. Okay, Construct 3 just crashed on me. So I had to reload some things, but we can move on now. So let's go back to our functions and down here under our rotate comment, let's add an action and let's go get our button options icon. And instead of rotating, remember we gave it a tween behavior. So if we scroll down to tween one property, let's select that. The property we want is the angle and the in value is I want it to spin, but I don't want it to spin like crazy. So I'm just going to say 90 degrees. That'll give it uh, one fourth of a full circle. And the time, I want it to happen pretty quick. So this is time in seconds. I'm going to go 0 0.2. Let's change the ease to out sinusoidal. And what that's going to do is it's going to give it a, I believe it's a slow start and then comes to a screeching halt. Now in 0.2 seconds, that's very subtle and it's not real easy to notice it. So hit done. This cogwheel, the sprite, the option sprite is going to be on each one of those screens. So each time we run this function, I wanna make sure that the cogwheel moves to the top of the Z order. So let's add an action, grab our cogwheel and scroll all the way down to the bottom and pick move to top. And we can move that up above that. So in a very split second blink of the eye, all of this is going to be created. And then the cogwheel is going to be moved all the way to the top. So it covers all that. And then these are going to flare out, which we are about to code that part. I am going to copy and paste this comment. I'm going to move it down below and I'm going to change this comment to read uh, buttons flare out. So what we're going to do is figure out where we want each one of these. So I'm going to move all these icons out of the way. I am going to measure out each button from the origin point, this little dot right here in the middle, to this origin point. And I'm going to go through and do the math so that we don't have to sit here and take up so much time figuring out exactly where I want it. So if we jump back over here in our functions and I'm just going to show you this one and then I'll do the math on the rest. So let's add an action and pick our button options Facebook. And let's go down to the tween. We actually want to tween two properties. So a little further down in the tweens, we want to tween two properties. The properties are going to be position. Let's get the position of our cogwheel. So that was btn uh, button options dot x. So we got the middle of that. And then let's subtract nine pixels. And then we can go down to the y and do the same thing. Say btn options dot y. And I'm going to subtract 50 pixels. And that should give us the location that we were eyeballing over on our level one tab. So for the time, I'm going to do something a little different. Go ahead and hit done on that. And up here in this area of the function, let's right click and go to add parameter. And I'm just going to call this speed. I'm going to add an action. And if we go into our system and go to our global and local variables, uh, I want to set the value and I want to find speed, the one we just created. And I'm going to set that 0 0.8. I'm going to be using this speed a few times. So I'm just going to use this as a local variable inside our function. I'm actually going to move this all the way to the very top. So the very first thing it does is it's going to set the speed, that variable, to 0 0.8. And then if we go back into our tween down here, we can change time to speed. And then the ease, I'm going to change this ease to out elastic. When it flares out, it's going to go to these 
value x and y values but it's going to go a little bit past them and then bounce back okay we can hit done on that with that highlighted control c to copy control v to paste and then i'm going to go figure out the math of where each one of these buttons should be all right so i took a second away to figure that out so back in our functions tab let's go in here with this selected hit r on the keyboard and let's make sure that we change our object from Facebook to Twitter and then let's click into it and we want to change these values so our X instead of minus 9 pixels we're actually going to add 29 pixels that'll move it to the right of the cogwheel and instead of 50 pixels up we're only going to go 41 pixels up that will actually make it appear lower than our other one that we made I'm going to highlight that, copy and paste, hit R on the keyboard, and let's change our Twitter to YouTube. And double click to go into this. And let's change our X to plus 49, and our Y is going to be minus nine. And then copy and paste one more time, R on the keyboard, change our YouTube to volume, Double click to go in it, change our plus 49 to plus 41, and our minus 9 is going to be plus 28. This actually should get our options created and flare them out. So I'm going to go over to the map, over in our project panel, drag out the cogwheel for our options, and I put it on the wrong layer. I'm going to put that on the buttons layer. Unlock my buttons layer. Now I can move it around. So I'm just going to place it somewhere in the left bottom corner. Although we did create all this code, it has nowhere to run. To be able to run this code, we actually have to call this function somewhere. So we're going to actually make a new event sheet just for options. So over here in our project panel, if we right click on event sheets and say add event sheet and let's rename it E underscore options and that's actually going to be in our menus folder. Come over here on our options event sheet and we say add an event. We go get our input, our touch and we say on tap object and that object is going to be our BTN options cogwheel. Hit done. And what we want to do is add that action, go to our functions, options open function. And it gives us the option to put a value in our speed parameter, but we don't need to because we set that inside the function itself. So just hit done. This will get us set up for right now. I'm going to go into our map event sheet and just anywhere in the open area right click and go down to include event sheet and we want to include the options event sheet so now when we are on our map level and it is reading map event sheet the map event sheet will also include the options event sheet so now this should be able to run so on our map layout let's go ahead and preview this and i'm going to maximize that and if i hit it and there it goes. Now, these are off a little. We will take care of that. But you saw our cogwheel spun and buttons flared out and they bounced with the elastic ease. And if I keep doing it, it just keeps creating new ones. Okay. So it is working. We do have a little more to do to this whole process. We will get on that in the next video. So I am going to end this one here. I will see you in the next one. And don't forget to save.